folks, do me a favor. I want to see how much of a class act the One Rental at a Time community is. I just want to congratulate Taylor, his wife, and his entire family. They welcomed baby number three to the family last week. Hence, he got a hall pass. We allowed him not to come on last week. It was okay. But we got him back today. <laughs> Taylor, congratulations. You're the man, Michael. Thank you so much. And, and Marco already reached out to me as well. Awesome. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So, hey, let's talk about Hire for Longer. That was going to be topic number one last week. It'll be topic number one this week. I think the market is finally hearing Jerome Powell. What say you? I, I, I totally agree. And have we not been beating this drum saying, what is the market doing? Saying that he's not going to keep rates higher for longer. Maybe we get an increase. Maybe we don't. It still looks unlikely, but possible. But the reality of it is next year at one point from here, we had four interest rate cuts baked in. Now we're down to three interest rate cuts. And that still seems relatively optimistic to me as we have inflation starting to kind of reignite a little bit in places. Yeah, it's it was wild to watch. And I mean, the 10 year, the 30 year, really the bond market has exploded in the last, I don't know what it would be, seven, eight trading days since that since that meeting. Correct. And generally speaking, the economic numbers have been weak. Which really, to me, just points to the economy slowing down. Uh, something that I have called, and I'll just hit you with it right now, is I actually think the recession is going to start Q1, Q2 of next year. Um, how does that feel? And we have a lot of headwinds, but how does it hit you first off? You think it's too early? It's interesting. I mean, you look at the GDP now forecast, it's still at 4.9%. I checked it this morning. For I, did too. I did too. <laughs> like, oh my Lord, where are these numbers coming from? Yeah. Um, what's interesting is the last meeting that we had with Powell, Powell basically said the economy is too strong. That was my takeaway from that meeting was him saying rates higher for longer. And the biggest concern for him, as he talked about inflation actually looking good for the last three prints, I don't necessarily know that I totally agree with that, but that was his take on it. And then he said, the fear though, is that the economy is too strong and that's going to bolster future inflation. Mm -hmm. So, um, what's funny is, a strong economy right now could lead to a deeper recession as they have to keep rates higher for longer or even increase them if the economic data comes through as strong as, I mean, 4.9% is ridiculous. But nonetheless, you get what I'm saying there. Yeah, it, it is really interesting because, again, when I looked at the SOP, and again, we would have talked about this last week, so we're going to talk about it this week. Yep. Unemployment, they lowered their expectations. Their GDP was higher. I guess the biggest takeaway for me and all of them was their expectation for rates to be 5.1, what I think was the blended average at right. the end of 2024. And I think of all the numbers, that's the one that kind of slapped Wall Street and said, wake up, guys. Yeah, the interesting one to me is that their inflation expectations actually came down a little bit, mm. but their interest for, or I'm sorry, their interest rate forecast went up. Which is weird. You're saying, okay, we've, we're controlling inflation better than we had previously expected, but we think interest rates need to be higher. And what that says to me is they are trying to restrict the economy further. The bigger the gap between where you have interest rates and inflation is the bigger the real rates are. Mm -hmm. Higher real rates mean a more restrictive financial policy monetary yeah. policy. And so that's what they're saying is the economy is chewing through these rate hikes too well. And inflation is coming down. But at the end of the day, the economy is firing too much. And therefore, we need more restrictive policy. Yeah, it, it, what I've told my audience, and I truly believe, and again, I'm wrong all the time is I think that was all theater. I think this was classic. I think Jerome Powell did what, he, what I've been asking for for six months. He acted tough. He talked tough. He's like, no, motherfucker, I'm going to punch you in the face until you give up. And I think the market finally hurt him. I think he has no intention of another rate hike this year. Um, you know, my hope is he can, he can pause all of next year, but we'll see. Because um, there was a scary number released Friday, pending home sales. I'm not sure if you saw it because you were busy with dad duty, I'm sure. <laughs> but pending home sales fell 7.1% month on month. Yikes. Yikes. My belief is that's the first economic number that shows 
525 basis point hikes is meaningful. That, and that shows it gets the worse average from here. 30-year mortgage at you know nearing 8% right now, somewhere between 7.5% and 8%. Yeah. Yep. It's 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 crazy. I, I I did a post yesterday on this, just talking about why mortgage rates are so high, and the obvious reason is because they base things off of the ten year treasury, and the ten year treasury has been on a rocket ship because mm-hmm. of this higher for longer and strong persistent inflation talk. But also, and we've talked about this before, is the abnormally wide spread between the thirty year mortgage rate and the ten year treasury yield that's being paid right now. Normally, that's at about a buck and a half, one and a half percent. Right now it's at a full 3%. And that is banks and lending agencies saying, we're scared of where inflation's going. So we need to build in a margin for error there. And therefore we're going to double what we normally place as the spread above the 10 year treasury yield. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I'm actually surprised they still have three rate hikes. So what is the odds for one more hike this year? Is it like sub 30? Yeah, the last I saw it was somewhere right around twenty two percent. Yeah, twenty two percent. That it, it's not happening. I mean, the PCE core hit. You know, having a three handle, three nine. Uh, we do get a jobs number on Friday. I don't know if you've seen the expectations, but I have them. The expectations are one hundred and fifty thousand, and they expect the unemployment rate to tick down to three point six. Um, I think the jobs number is going to come in weaker than that. What 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 do you think? It's interesting. There's been some gyration in the unemployment rate. Right. So the unemployment rate has actually bucked up modestly. Don't get me wrong. Sure. Very modestly. But uh, it's actually come up in recent months. And now they're expecting it to move the opposite direction, um, which is an interesting move for me. But I think that I think 150 is a good number. What we've seen is that we're rolling through some of those massive numbers from a year ago when we were adding half a million jobs in a month, which was just ludicrous. Uh, growth in the labor market, and now it's starting to slow. But what you still see out there in the jobs market is you still have jobs having higher wage increases than inflation. So you're actually getting real growth in payment for laborers, whereas that wasn't the case for most of the post-COVID world that we've seen. Yeah, no, I totally agree. We're actually seeing real wage increases, pretty decent amount. I think the expectation for wages on Friday is like 4.2% year on year, you know, something with a four on it. Historically it's with a two on it. So, so double, but a lot of that frankly is makeup for, you know, negative real wage growth the last two years, which has just been horrible. So fair. Yeah. As inflation ripped in 2021, obviously we did not keep up 2022. Pardon me. As inflation ripped in 2022, we did not keep up with wage growth by any stretch. Yeah. Yeah. So at the end of the day, um, the market's kind of getting higher for longer, I guess the other thing to talk about is we're just about to enter earnings seasons. Uh, do you think earnings have been reduced enough that they're going to be able to get over them? Or what are we seeing out there? They've been, as they always do, they've been ratcheting them downwards, right? So yeah. now we'll see if these uh, if these companies can come in and, and, and outperform the hurdle that is getting lower and lower along the way. Last quarter, we had about a negative 5% earnings growth. So earnings actually shrank negative 5%. And that was above that was better than expectation, which is why we get the round. <laughs> we're only we're only down five percent. That's better than we thought. There you go. There and you so go. it'll be interesting. So two weeks from now, we'll start to get the bank the bank starting to roll out. Um, and and I think that we've got a little bit of headwinds here. I I think you know as rates continue to press higher, that hurts some some you know specific areas of the market like utilities. Utilities are getting absolutely torch today, torch today. Mm -hmm. They're usually a defensive sector that you can count on being relatively stable. Utility stocks right now are down somewhere between two and 7% today, depending on what you're looking at. Today, 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 (laughs) today. Yeah. They're hearing higher for longer too, right? Because they're rate sensitive stocks. Um, So it's, it's interesting, but you're getting them, them absolutely taken on the chin today. Wow. Very, very cool. Well, I know you put out a lot of great daily stuff on your Instagram page. What is it? How can people follow you? Yeah, thanks so much. So check us out at Life Goal Investments, at Life Goal Investments. Awesome, buddy.